leather gloves, we're slapping in hands. Popcorn and peanuts, we're working the stands. Pink cotton candy, love on a stick. He's chasing the beer, the trick of the lips, play ball. Play ball. Roll up the bases and smack it right over the wall. Hello, and welcome to Left to Saves Live. Live. I'm your host, John Santo. In the studio is my co-host, Pat Maroon. And Steve Oliva. Co-co-host. The third wheel. Third wheel the third is wheel. The very funny third wheel. Thanks welcome to much. the show. Hi, buddy. Welcome, welcome. Hey, how you doing? Unfortunately, John Rocchia is not here tonight. But he he's is. on assignment. He will... You never know when he's going to call in. We never know. You never know never when know. he's going to call he'll, he'll in. He'll be checking in we from a know. nondescript he's, hotel. Uh, he's very into the show. He doesn't want to make sure. He wants to make sure we do a good job. And the last time we were on the show without John, you got fired. I got fired. But but the letters, phone calls, and the protests in front of John's house all paid off. And now I went from worse to from the host. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's great. So Plus, we went to hopefully this week that one of us will get fired and uh, we'll be the uh, president of Laugh to Saves Lives. I'm going to say very little because I don't want to keep I fired. will sue the pants off of this organization. Just don't talk about any of your shows that you're on Rick Morgan. Uh, no, 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 no. I have no shows coming up. You'll have to... Uh, Try firing us. Shows. Try firing me. I'll sue you. I'll go to Human Resources, <laughs> litigation, <laughs> every suit under the sun. Just don't talk about we got to lower this. We always tell people to I'm lower the radio. I'm getting cash. You got it? You getting cash? I'm getting cash if you fire me. All right. So well, we're going to go on unemployment? Can you, can you fire a non-salaried employee? No. It's kind of just like, I don't you, think just so. say, you just say don't come back. Well, you might have severance pay. You know, you can get the sponsor's severance pay. All right. I'll get that, too. All right. So we have a great show lined great up. Show. And I'll let John Santo tell you everything because he's the host. I'm the host. We have a terrific show. We have Peter Bales is going to call in oh. uh, in a little while. Excellent. Uh, he's going to talk about the veteran show. And, uh, love Peter Bales. He's love great Peter guy. Bales. Great guy. What a terrific historian. He's unbelievable. And he's a great comic, too. Great comic and uh, professor. He's really smart. Uh, and uh, we can't wait to have him back on the show. Even though, unfortunately, he's not in the studio with us. We had a great time with him last time. He's I missed there. out. I missed out. I was jealous. He, he was my, my, my doorman in my old building that I used to was live Was he in. really? No, he wasn't. But my doorman said, hey, you do comedy? Oh, yeah, yeah. He goes, uh, yeah, my uh, professor. Uh, oh, he's also wow. a comedian. I go, what's his name? He goes, Peter, Peter Bell. I go, <laughs> that's I know awesome. Peter yeah. He loved him. He thought it was, oh, was funny he's great. and smart. Uh, his comedy's going so good that he's trying to be a doorman now. <laughs> that's just hurtful, insensitive, inappropriate, <laughs> and misogynist. I don't know what that means, but I threw it in there. And we also have Jack Clunan, who's a stand up comic and a organ donor recipient. He's going to tell you all about that. We're going to have him on. Great guy. And, he, and he's uh, also a Mets also fan. Also a Mets fan. Is he? He's very Good. close with Ed Hearn. He maybe tell us a little bit about Ed Hearn later. Ed Hearn, the so catcher. We'll have a Mets uh, story. Yeah. Yes, Jack is a very funny comic, great kid. And, uh, yes, he's very close with Ed Hearn, and he'll tell you some stuff about Wait, the Mets. And he's yeah. here in the studio. We're lucky to have him in the studio. We're going to have him in the studio. Yes, I apologize. So fellow Mets baseball. fan. Jack, I apologize, Pat. What? Ed Hearn. John, Ed Hearn. I know the name. I'm a Mets fan. Catcher. He is a catcher. 86 Mets. No, I'm thinking of John Stearns. John Stern was a catcher, was too. He was a catcher yeah, also. Yeah, yeah. Ed Hearn's But Ed Hearn, he played, I think he went to Kansas City after the Mets. But Jack will tell us all about He'll that. He'll tell us all yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, Jack is. Uh, we have to have Jack with us. Yes, good man. And we also have Pat Gaglia Darty. Did I say it right? Patty, Patty G. G. Patty, yes, Patty was, G. Patty was, G. He was, Patty he was G. A lot the loud mouth in this room tonight. A lot he of was the loud out. mouth uh, last week on the show, to, you know, talking behind the scenes. The off camera. Yeah, yeah. He, but he's quiet this week. Yeah. We, we, put guys, a, we put a muzzle on him, and we're going to take it off after we're going to let him on the show. You guys right remember from the infamous pinata segment, yes. which I loved. We, pinata segment. We prom which I loved. He promised not to do a pinata section. Uh, section. No pinata. All the times we were hitting, yeah. trying to get candy, we were actually beating up uh, a saint. Beating the devil or Satan something. Or Satan. Yeah. We're kicking Satan's <laughs> that, ass. That, this made that, it made that game a lot scarier than it. Now, in, in, the, in the End of Days movie, I fought the devil. He was a choir boy. Was he in a pinata? Uh, he was not in the pinata. He was in the body of Gabriel Byrne. And, uh, and uh, I killed him. And I fought the devil and I got him back into hell. Oh, the, the man with your physique. Movie. A man yes, with your physique. Movie. You know, you if know, you John. If you broke open a piñata, what would be in it? A man. Oh, I would steaks. smash the piñata. One shot would be terminated. With like steaks and protein powder. Steaks, come out? proteins, Hot no, chicks no from sugars, the 70s? But nothing like that. All uh, uh, beneficial, uh, fitness uh, type. Now foods. your old uh, 
housekeeper who you took care of Not the housekeeper, no, although she is a little frisky with She's her, from down there in Mexico, so she's into the pinatas and the, all of those things like that. Arnold, your friend John Santos, has been very angry lately. I'd like to see what he would do with a pinata. Oh, he'd be the, the bad. Very, very angry, John Santos. Very what's going angry. On? What, what's happening with him? I like him angry. It shows the spirit. I okay. love it. Well, we want to try to see him well, in a good mood. You well, know? Just like John Santos, Arnold, like if, if you were doing a, a bodybuilding show and mm. other, other bodybuilders showed up, like John Sandler doesn't want other comedians showing up who aren't on the show. If other oh, bodybuilders showed up, you would take care of them? Absolutely. Squash them between your bulbous sides? Squeeze thighs. them like puny people that they are. <laughs> Absolutely. But in the true end of this movie, the best line in that movie, the priest is saying that I should have more faith. And I tell the priest, if I have a choice between faith or my Glock, I choose my Glock. Oh, that was a great line. Man. Yes, it was. Great line. Listen, Sounded good, yeah. Goliath, uh, Goliath, uh, yeah, the Goliath. Who was yeah. the other guy who beat Goliath? All he had was a slingshot, man. Come on. Slingshot, yeah. I forget. It's been a while since I went to Sunday school. So, Steve, how was your week this week? You, you said you did the show with Patty G. said you did the show with Patty G. Yeah, but the one time you guys are always wearing red orange, I wear it. You're not wearing it. Really. Yeah, but you're not wearing it. That's not orange. I came right from a little bit. It died. It looks it's like died. pink. It looks like what, what? What do I call that? Peach? I got a little smaller to make the guns it, look a little peach. bigger. It's peach. I'm wearing bright orange. It's not peach. It's like a pink. peach. Shirts. Steve Oliva doesn't Orange. wear peach. That could be like a t-shirt and a Steve Oliva doesn't wear peach. It actually is a little faded. Well, tell us about your show that you did. Uh, yeah, well, tell us no, about the I show actually, while I try I to figure by, out how to do this. Uh, I was home and, and uh, Patty G. Pat Agliotti, our friend, uh, was doing a show right near where I live in a condo uh, community. Not mine, but another one. So, I, you know, I said, yeah, I'm going to come over and watch it. So, uh, nice group of people in a nice big cavernous clubhouse. And uh, five minutes away, I said, I'm going to watch Pat and his, and his gang. So uh, he was nice enough to uh, give me a guest spot on the show. I didn't go there for that. I came to, there to watch yeah, Pat. Yeah, but, but thank God Santa wasn't there. Oh, Santa, well, he would have hopped on. Baby. He would have been no, pissed, he been right pissed off at you. I get pissed no, off when people I show know. up with shows that I don't Yeah, on. but what if they, I just showed up to watch Pat. I didn't show no, up. No, no, that's fine. And that's Pat fine. was nice enough to say, That's what they all want, say, you know. want to do a guest spot? And I did 45 minutes. They I said, thanks say. a lot, man. I appreciate it. You know? I did a quick 45. Hey, Seinfeld did a 35, 30-minute guest oh, spot. Oh, yeah. that pisses we me off. We would have booted him. If I was there, we would have booted him. And five. Wallace did 30 minutes. They did an hour guest spot. I would have gave Wallace more time than, uh, the other, than Seinfeld. You know how I but who else was that. on the show besides Patty G? Um, Mark Breyer. Uh, Joe, Joe Pontillo. Where was the show? At the Villages West. Oh, okay. So nice. I did yeah. a little crowd work and when I came out. And Eddie Faco. Crazy Eddie. Crazy yeah, Eddie, Eddie Faco. yeah, nice show. Nice show. That's yeah, good. and we yeah. had a nice round table, nice eclectic uh, group of people, and uh, we had a good time. Good, good. You know, we had a lot of fun. Pat, uh, Patty G did great. Everybody did great. And, uh, it's nice to see Patty finally do good, you know? Oh, he's doing good. You should come by and see what it's like sometimes. So wait a he minute, really folks. Well. No, Patty's a good man. Look at the size of your coffee compared to mine. What's going on there, Ace? There's coffee envy. Yeah. I don't How put, do you guys I don't, I Listen, I don't put honey in my coffee. What do you put in your coffee? It's just black. Somebody's got a, somebody's got a big car outside. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. It's called compensating. I got, a, I got a Volkswagen and a yeah, Prius. Well, it's cool being here live yeah, watching. Yeah, okay. Huh? No, nothing. Um, All right, folks. So that was the week. We had a great show at the Villages uh, West and... Um, should I talk about the show we're going to do this Saturday? At yeah. The, is it a Left to Save His Live show? It's a Northport VA. Yes. Patty G yes. and I are doing the uh, Northport uh, Veterans uh, Hospital Administration. Great show. Uh, at 2 p.m. That is in, uh, it's actually in Huntington or Northport? Northport? It's in Northport, so it's a Northport VA. I know they, um, and it's a 2 p.m. <laughs> show. Listen, I don't know, it could be in the next town over. Yeah, right, it's buddy? in uh, South Tall, the Northport true. VA. All right, yeah. buddy, that is The Washington true, Redskins don't play in D.C., they play in Maryland. And the New York so. Giants play in... New Jersey. There you go. Yeah. All right, son. And the New, New York, York Metropolitan Area. Well, that's New York a, Mets so play in Tokyo. It's a weekend, so, it's a weekend uh, show to Veterans Day? It's Saturday well, at 2 p.m. to afternoon. Oh, this awesome. coming nice, Saturday, nice, nice. April 28th. And what, and, uh, and what room is this? Is this the room you did the last time? Is it the one with the big... Uh, Auditorium, or you're doing it in the uh, the, it's like the big sunroom. Big sunroom. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's, that's the one John and I did it's the last sunroom, time. We did. Yeah, baby. it's so, nice. You get it's it's nice. You get to meet the veterans. Like you talk to them before. It was a fun experience. They you autograph know? your T-shirt still. Yeah, the veterans. They used to give us a T-shirt, a comedy. It had like the logo, of the comedy show, and all the veterans would sign the shirt, and then you take it home. And then I did the show a couple of times. Every time I went back. More veterans would sign the shirt. Nice. nice. So it was great. And yeah. I love doing, you know, we all love it. We've all done it at one time or another because John puts on shows, Pat puts on shows with, mm -hmm. with John. And people, you know, these are veterans. 
majority, at least in John's show that I did, are older, older guys. I mean, these are guys that are Vietnam veterans. Occasionally, you get a World War II veteran. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I can't. I love to see those guys. You know, Korea. I'm, Korea. Where, yeah. where is this? We had, golf we had for the. We had recent veterans. We had like uh, golf uh, yeah. was oh, sure. some of the shows. We had, uh, a guy couldn't have been more than four. Yeah, we had guys sure. right and we, and we not had, out that long. We had for the gala, we had those two World War II veterans. Remember that, Steve? For the gala, yeah. The gala last year. Oh, yes. Yeah, the, the two, that was, so that, we brought them that up. That was yeah. really amazing. That was... Uh, I can't I can't say hello to those guys enough, you know. I'm just... Because, yeah. let's face it, you know, I mean, the older we get, you know, we're not going to see as many of those right. guys anymore. It's just a fact of life. And uh, whenever I see them, I saw a guy in a store not too long ago, and I, I might have mentioned this before, and, you know, I, I saw he had a Vietnam veteran hat on. Mm -hmm. So he's wearing it proudly, and, and, and I saw him in the parking lot. And I made it a point just to, you know, say hi to him and thank you for your service. And when you say that to these guys, at, at, any, at any age, obviously, he, he lit up. And he goes, well, thank you for acknowledging it. And it's just such a great thing because um, maybe people don't say that to them all the time. And you know what's weird? The World War II veteran was the last one constructed. Vietnam, the wall went up first. Then they did a Korean War one not far from the wall. Where they're walking through rice paddies, it's like soldiers, it's uh, iron soldiers oh, yeah. walking. And then they did um, the World War II uh, veteran between the reflecting pool uh, near the Lincoln Memorial and the Washington Monument. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why did they? I mean, my grandfather never lived to see the, the finished one. Why did they do that so late? I, I don't always know. wondered. I don't know. It's uh, like you know, for, for the Vietnam War. No, World War II went up oh. after Korea and Vietnam. Not in the order of the of the of the history. That's though, unusual. Yeah. Which I thought was strange. It was the last one constructed, and they were losing so many veterans per day. I remember Bob Dole was one of the people on right. the on you know involved with it, and Tom Hanks was involved. Right, with it. right. Maybe that's and, what it is, uh, though. It's just a matter of people raising the spearheading it and bringing yeah. it to light that it's needed, and uh, you know getting it done. So that's yeah. probably it. You know, all it takes is uh, the, unfortunately the right, right people to get behind it. No, it's good, man. So you guys are going to have fun. Uh, it's it's yeah. rewarding to do them uh, shows, you know. And uh, and uh, John Santo and I have a show next week on uh, Friday night at the uh, Jones Beach Hotel. Oh, the Jones Beach Hotel? Yeah. Is that Where is that, on the Causeway? I don't know. I didn't know. I never... <laughs> I think it was eight years ago, but I'll have to look on the flyer. But mm. it'll be fun. It's always good working with John. Got we got Les it. Deegan on that show. Which Les Deegan's on the show. Larry and, uh, Lombardi put the show together. He does his Dean awesome. Martin and... Uh, um, and uh, uh, Jerry Lewis uh, impersonation. It La is Larry's hilarious. a great guy. Larry's a great guy. And who else we got on the show? Oh, Steve uh, Schill uh, Schlesinger. Schlesinger, yeah. He's on the show too. The Jones yeah. Beach Steve's Hotel. A great guy. If he's not fishing, because he's usually uh, you know striped bass season, he might miss the show if he's close to Jones Beach. But uh, yeah, Steve's a great guy. Hey, Jones Beach Hotel. I think they have a Italian restaurant inside or some kind of restaurant in there now. Yeah, that it, used to be yeah. a uh, a really bad uh, hotel. Yeah. Now it's a palace. And then Steve and I, I think uh, Bobby could put the flyer up. We have uh, May 11th at uh, Saville Fire Department. Yeah, yeah May 11th. That's Sable. the Left to Saves Live show, right? Yeah, I, like, I like this. Yeah. I like this. Uh, yeah. You know, it's one picture of John on there. I appreciate that. Well, it's you about know, 12 he's comments. the president. He's allowed he to be He's the president. Well, we know he's and the he's president. And he's also a member. Right, John? <laughs> John, you know, you know he, we, we all have of, pictures, buddy. Well, right. well, he, he is the guy who you know, founded the whole thing. Listen, just because he's fired you, let me, you let me, say stuff well, about let, it, Let's right? talk about what the show is about first. It's about the... Uh, well, it's the uh, Heather Pendergrass. Right? Heather Pendergrass, yes. So that's a big uh, fundraiser. This man is so busy. And then we can rip apart his picture because... Uh, it's old. No, listen, he has to get some new pictures. New pictures. I, I like that picture, gets though. He hasn't I did look anything. like Denny Terrio in my picture. He hasn't That's did anything probably new. Peter Bales. He hasn't did anything new. Speaking of old, is this Peter Bales on the line? <laughs> Hello, Peter. Peter? I, I hope it's Peter. Hey, how are you? Who's there? Pat Marone, John Santo, and Steve Oliva. Okay. <laughs> it's a pleasure having you, Steve. You're you, one of the you best. Know, you know, Peter, uh, Peter. your enthusiasm uh, Peter, is, is dripping through the speaker right now. Are we live now? We yeah, are buddy. live. You could take the oh, this uh, flyer is great. off the You know, I, don't, I, I didn't mean to be low-key. I'm just uh, breathless to be on with you three guys. I just am. <laughs> Bobby, so you can terrific, take the flyer, Each one though. of you, except for John. <laughs> Peter doesn't like me. I, I love him. I, I want to uh, right love now, Peter up Bell. front. I want to go on the record as a strong supporter of your campaign for governor. Uh, you are one of the best guys out there. Uh, everybody watching this needs to know John is not a Democrat, not a Republican. He's not even 
in the Working Families Party or the Green Party. He's starting his own party. It's the I'm Out for Myself Party. Oh, That's right. <laughs> well, well, Peter, uh, Peter, just Peter, like every other politician. Uh, Peter, he yeah. stands for greater state aid for mental health treatments uh, for me and my family. That's what he wants. Uh, and we certainly understand that. His and family. Appreciated. And I am finding a job for Peter in my administration. And for people out there who don't know Peter Bales, but everybody knows Peter Bales, he runs a, uh, a stand-up university. It's a, you learn how to do stand-up That's right, comedy. at the brokerage comedy. in Belmore, stand-up university. Yes, it's stand great. University. I recommend it to everybody. Go ahead, Peter. And you guys have, you've been there, Pat. You were a big hit. I love it. I love it. I think you guys are great. It's the first, it's, and, uh, it's the first school. And you, you guys are terrific. And if you don't get anything out of the class, you can always get Peter and Rich Walker fighting. It's mm. terrific. You know, it, I mean, so yeah, we, we, don't, we argue, but it's, it's a, a labor of love. It really is. We want it, to find the best joke. It, it is a great class. I recommend it to anybody who wants to get into hey, stand-up comedy. You went? I went, yeah. I mean, That's went. the first Well, school. I was one of his failures, but, you know, but, you know. Listen, no, 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 no you were school. one of our... Uh, well, we never had a special ed student before. And it was <laughs> hey, Peter, when it was I'm governor, you're going to get uh, and, I, and by the end of the uh, class, he took his helmet off, and we were so <laughs> proud of him. Oh. Hey, Peter, just think own. when I'm governor. Hey, Pat, I have a friend who works for Newsday, and he's doing some investigations, and he's uncovered statistics about an unusual number of elderly people in the Glen Cove area uh, going to the hospital for gastric uh, distress. <laughs> is, there, is there any way you could explain that? Well, you know what? I had Tugboat Manny down at the Regency the other day, <laughs> yesterday. He might have poisoned the residents. I don't fill, know what Fill happened. the audience in as to why that joke is so funny. <laughs> yeah. Because then they may not understand. I am a chef at assisted living facility. That's why it's funny. But most right? of the audience that are regular viewers know that Regular already. viewers know, but we're constantly growing. <laughs> hey, Peter, when I'm governor, you're going to get financial aid for that stand-up university. Oh, that's what we want. That's, <laughs> we need that. Uh, we don't want it for the students. We just want it for us. Yes, I meant for the professors. Yes. Now, that's uh, good. That's, that's great. And, and unlimited parking. People don't know parking. how well-rounded you are. I mean, uh, well, John Santo he is, is, am I correct, an aeronautics expert. Yes, he uh, is. Not, and not only aeronautics, outer space uh, travel to an extent. He was discussing uh, uh, UFO sightings and recently. Apollo we did and a thing Apollo on Apollo 13, 13 last week, yeah. Much like yourself, Mr. Oh, you Bales. did? Yeah, it was the anniversary well, listen, of Apollo 13. Well, you know, I'm a college professor and a comedian, and i got to tell you, I was talking to the class about Charles Lindbergh, the first man to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. Yep. As, you know, as John will tell you, he took off from Roosevelt Field and finally landed, you know, staying up the whole time in Paris. And I actually had a student raise his hand and go, how could he take off from a mall? <laughs> of course. <laughs> now, he, can you explain, Pat, why that's a ridiculous question? Peter, he didn't? I, uh, I can't explain it. I'm, uh, I'm one of the special ed students, remember? Peter, what you're saying is he didn't grab a Sabaro's before he took <laughs> off? No, he didn't. He thought that, that it was a mall and you can't take off from a mall. <laughs> Unbelievable. Peter, and he you, was up uh, at 23 hours. It wasn't a short flight. It was a 20... Three somewhat hours. No, it was in, I think it was the real feat was how long he stayed up. Yep. Uh, I think it was well into the 30s. Yeah, it might have been and over he, 30 hours. And he hit, by mistake, he came out over Ireland and could stay up enough to head south and land, and, and he still landed in Paris. Hey, yep. hey Peter. Um, yeah. Steve Oliva, do you know your, your prize student, Pat Marone, referred to uh, Mr. Lindbergh as. Charlie Lindberger last week? <laughs> no, Lindenberg. Uh, Charlie uh, Lindenberger. Lindenberg. Charlie Lindenberg. <laughs> yeah. That is a failure of American education. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocked I by that. Listen, I called Santo Charles Lindenberg. You call him Charlie? He goes, what are you, a regular Charlie Lindenberger? You know, that, uh, you know, I know it's not your fault, uh, Peter. You know, you can only deal with the students that come into your class at their level. And, uh... You know, listen, it's the first, uh, your, your university is the first one he didn't get a welding torch when he left. So he, he, I know he appreciates it. I know he loved being we're not, in class. We're not even certified. We're not even on the books. But, uh, you, <laughs> should be you, Pat, you know, you should be so proud of that degree that you earned. And, yes. And, and you're, you're doing great. Steve, I haven't worked with Steve for a while. Thank you. And it's because I really request that. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Hey, Peter, I have a question. I'm looking forward to it in the future because you know, I just buddy. love Italian humor. 
<laughs> Peter, I have a question for you, because I, like you, am a, a big history buff, and uh, especially uh, space and aviation history. How do you, I can't tolerate, like, the, the level of um, unawareness that people have for history. It's, 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 it's scary. Uh, people don't it is know very scary. Recently, like I was things. talking to somebody, and I said, you know, ancient Athens always had the best navy, and ancient Sparta always had the best army. And the guy goes, uh, which one had the best Air Force? <laughs> how do you answer that? Oh you, you, my tell God. To stop, you tell Pat to stop. Tell Pat to be quiet. And, and, so and, and, so getting know. on for the main reason why you're on the show, yes. uh, I want to say, uh, we, uh, how was the uh, show Sunday at the uh, St. Albans? How, uh, did you yeah, I did a veterans show on Sunday at St. Albans, and it is, and I'm being serious now, it is really, really, really rewarding. Those guys have been through a lot, and, and we wheel them in and, and, and do comedy for them, and they really appreciate it. And as a comic, you feel really good afterwards. And I, just, I can't say enough about the experience. It's just one of those good things. I think some of the guys sneak in just to get the free food. It's one of the veterans I said, you know, what war were you in? He goes, the War of 1812. <laughs> and what year did so that said, take place? I said, what year was the War of 1812? He couldn't even get that answer. You, you know, and I said, Pat, get the hell out of here. <laughs> you um, know, you know, Peter. The first time I yeah. met you, the first time I met you, we did a veteran show together. Uh, remember That's... in Northport, it was me, you, Rich Walker, and uh, Rudy Fusco and Tugboat. And it was Manny, right? Yeah, Manny. When you you held up the sign to all the uh, the uh, the veterans, you told them you told, you told them you were sorry because they were listening yeah. to. <laughs> That was a yeah, fun we had show. to apologize. Manny was uh, in the very new stages of comedy. <laughs> we had to apologize for him. We still uh, apologize. I worked for with uh, Peaches Rodriguez and Angela Cobb. Do you know Angela Cobb? I do know them. I know yes, them. Yes, I know, yes, I know both yeah. of them. She's uh, Angela Cobb is 5'11", and she brags about it. Yeah, and I was really, really I kind of uh, thrilled that she asked me next Halloween if she... Would, she and I could go together as Sonny and Cher. Ooh. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to are that. You, are you going to do it? Listen, get it, talking about Peaches Rodriguez, she followed Jerry Seinfeld and George Wallace, and she killed. I have to tell you that. She destroyed the room. I, I heard about that. Yes. I heard about that. That's quite so, amazing. But neither and you, one of them should have been there. You performed in front of Jerry Seinfeld with no audience. He didn't know he was no mentoring audience. me, but he mentored me. Neither one and of them should have been there. that's the philosophy that we use at Stand-Up University. <laughs> they shouldn't have been there. I'm against that. It, it was great. It was great to see. It was really a fun night. If you're not on the show, don't go to the show. Peter, the last yeah. time I worked with Peaches, uh, I hosted, and uh, I bombed horrifically. She came on afterwards, or she headlined and killed that night. So she totally can, destroyed. She can follow Seinfeld and and a guy like me and, Bob, and still kill both times. So good, good for her. Good and for and gentlemen, thanks to me, she has a green card. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and another thing, I know you got blocked out, but what you were saying about Seinfeld, you performed in front of Seinfeld with no audience. <laughs> That's All right. right. Do you know that? Do you want me to tell that story? Yeah, yes. tell that story I real quick. Then story, we have yeah. to. Uh, we have another caller, I think. They're on the line now. Oh, they're on oh, the line, okay, but... Okay, thank you. Caller, caller. But, call but they won't, but they're not going to gonna speak. Call. Peter Let's Bales listen. has the floor. We want to hear this story, yeah. Peter. Are you, are you there? Are you there? I'm, in, I'm here. Oh, hey, this is Donnie. Who? Hey, buddy, Peter, we're just going to let doing? Peter tell, yeah, we'll, tell the Seinfeld story. All right, I'll tell the story, and then you can take over. I love these three guys, though. They're the best. Can I... Can I follow you, though? I'm not sure I can follow you. You can follow me. I think you can follow me. I think it's not going to be any right. problem. All right, here we go. Here's my last story. So I went up late at the comic strip, like 2 o'clock in the morning, and there were four people in the audience, and the lights were in my eyes, and I didn't see them leave, but they left, and there was no waitress in the room, and I kept performing to no people, zero that. people in the room. <laughs> Seinfeld looks through the window because he was hanging out at the bar. He walks into the room, down to the side of the stage, and I'll never forget these words. He said, hey, man, there's nobody here. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest I shrugged. I, I put my head down. Oh. I walked off, and boy... 
But uh, that the reason why I brought this up, Peter says, next time you talk to Peter, make sure you tell him. I said, I will. It's a great story. Peter, so. you know, the fact that you held it and stayed up there regardless says something That's about right. your character, my friend. I still think, Peter, uh, you're one of the best Steve, comics. Steve. Yes, sir. Pat. All of you guys. John Santo. You're the best. You too, Thank you. Peter, you too. And, uh, I just recommend you guys know those veteran shows are so rewarding. Oh, yeah. And we, we're going to keep them going, right? We love doing yes, them. They're great absolutely. to do, and we thank you for, for doing it and calling in about it. All right. Well, I will talk and see you guys soon. All right. Okay. Great talking to you, Thanks, Peter. Peter. Thanks, Peter. All Who's right. the caller? Cause we Thanks have a lot. Right. Thank you. I think we it's have... Donnie from Life. Bye-bye. Is Bye, that, Peter. We don't have much time because we've got to get Bye. Jack on, but uh, and we're only Who's going to Who's this on the phone now? Donnie from Life Act? Hey, Bob. My name's Donnie Stefani. Oh. Hey, Donnie. How you doing? Good. How, how are you? How you doing? Oh, um, good, good. John wanted me to give a call in. He just did a show down here in uh, oh. St. Louis County, Port St. Louis, What part Florida. of Brooklyn are you from, uh, Donnie? No, he's in Florida. Uh, Port St. No, I know he's from out of town. I can tell he's from out of town. I can tell he's with John. He doesn't they did sound... A, they did a, port, a show in Port St. Lucie. Po oh, this weekend, Can you John? tell us real yes. quick how that went? Because we only have about a minute. Yeah, Tom it, Daddario. Yeah, no problem. It was it was a great show. It's his third time down here. And uh, as always, he performs. He brings great people. We raise great money for our organization and his, too. And we look forward to having him back anytime we can. Say that again, how he always brings great people, because I did the show in 2015. Well, he said after 2015. <laughs> oh, he after 2015. Yeah. Hey, Donnie, yeah, I talked yeah. about the second round. He brings great people. <laughs> I talked to John. He was raving about the show. He, he, the shows. He had such a great time. You guys treated him great. Great crowds. All the Facebook lives were great I'm with him here. and Denario. Yep. There was really, yeah. You guys look like you had a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Lots of fun. For well, sure. thank you for we, being we, a part of uh, letting laughter saves lives uh, be a part down there. Definitely. We, we uh, always welcome. We had a, over 39 uh, retired New York firemen in the audience, so they, yeah, they were really appreciative. Were they, there were a lot of New Yorkers in the show I did down I, there, too. Were they it was drinking great. themselves into oblivion, yeah. those firemen? Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. You I'm glad to of, see. Most of the New Yorkers come down here to retire, so we Even got plenty of Even in retirement, they're still, uh, still keeping uh, up Hey, Donnie, the where, where was the show this year? I forget what venue. It was. Uh, it's called St. Lucia River Club at Ballantrae. Perfect. And it was a great turnout, yeah, right? Year we did it there. Great turnout. It was. We had uh, about a, a 115 people. And what was the cause uh, again to, for the audience? It most of it. We went to the uh, Firefighters Benevolent, St. Lucie County. So what we do is we help our firefighters and also uh, the charities in our local county. Awesome. So all the money, all the money we raise will stay right here in our county and help local charities. Nice. Awesome. Nice. Nice. That's Good. great. All That's right, great Donnie. Story. Thank you very much for calling in. We have to go to all commercial, right, and hey, then Donnie, we will come back with it. Jack Clunan. Donnie, thanks for the call. Thanks, Donnie. Uh, thanks thank for guys. all the great uh, no things you do. Be safe, Take brother. Care. Be safe. Thank you. Have a good night. When someone is choking, brain damage can occur after just four minutes. Did you know every five days a child dies because of a choking accident? My name is Art Lee. I invented Life Back to protect my family. LifeVac is an easy-to-use suction device with a special one-way valve to help save a choking victim. I care for my dad who's prone to choking. Having LifeVac in my home gives me peace of mind. Protect your family. Buy LifeVac now. Thank you, Daddy. Call 1-877-LIFEVAC or visit LifeVac.net. I think we're back and we're back. All right, we have a, uh, a guest in studio. Uh, I'm going to read his bio real quick. Jack Clunan is an up-and-coming comedian who performs all over New York Great. City. He's a three-time liver recipient and cancer survivor. As a stand-up comedian, actor, and motivational speaker, he's taken impossible odds and turned them into comedy and inspiration. Jack uses clean humor to show what the power of a positive attitude can do and what saying yes to organ donation looks like. Welcome, Mr. Jack Clunan. What's going on? Thanks for Jack, having me. Good man, Jack. And what, what Steve keeps trying to pull you over, did, what he, and he's trying to fight you. Well, he heard about you, Steve. He doesn't want to be too close to I'm you. I'm trying to bring the brother in. You probably pulled close. Pulled over. He you pulled away from on that yeah, side. You know I don't know where that was. I wanted him on this side. Like, yeah. <laughs> this, ain't, this ain't the Macy's Santa. Like me you away. The Macy's Santa. This kid knows where to sit. He knows which side is safe. He got taught that by his family. Stranger danger. That's what he sees over there. He sees well, it's great uh, to have you. Great he sees to have a straight-up brother right here. That's what he sees. How long have you been doing stand-up? 
Two and a half years. Two and, two and a half hit years. The deck. <laughs> rookie, two years. No, but he's he's he's, he's, good. he's beyond him. two and a half years. Well, in I terms know of that. Talent. We're gonna he's see him. Terrific. He's not like Pat, twenty four years. Good man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot Thanks. of people are not like me, but you know what? You're right. No, I'm just thankfully. Thankfully, this kid's coming up, baby. I've seen him totally crush yeah. some tough rooms. Yes, he's very and he funny. Crushes the room, unbelievable. And and before, I didn't I didn't even pay him to say that. So and before we get to your uh, what we brought you on the show for, clarify. I was telling you very close with Ed Hearn. Yes. Yes. You thought I was talking about John I, Stern. I know the name, and I said Ed Hearn. I think he's a catcher. But then I'm like, wait a minute, am I thinking of John Stearns? My apologies, Ed, if you're watching, brother. And but, uh, Pat, that's why he wasn't on the show that night. No, so wait a right. minute. I'm from that's Flushing. Funny. I should know these things. I wish I was on the show I that night. I was sorry. Bro, yeah, he did, no. he sorry. did a show with what, Ed Hearn on it, yeah. Give me the years. To, I, I know Ed Hearn. But what years was that? At, at 86. 20? All right. I, 86 on the Mets, and I forget when he got hurt. Ed? He that was, was a World for Ed Series. Cohn, yeah. And then I think he hung around for two years. Right. He had a lot Dave, of shows. David Cohn, not Ed Cohn. Let me tell David, you something. What did yeah, I David, say? He said Ed Cohn. See, That's right. 86. Who cares about you're it? You're a man. young kid, but thank you. But 86, there was, I'm from Queens. I'm from Flushing. There was a lot of things going on in the neighborhood at that time. If you know, you know, and the Mets were a little wild. We all were a little wild. Hey, so. but the, the Mets, did, he, they did a lot of nice things. He, if you let it, let them talk with, it, with all the stuff they did, when they, you know. Go ahead, Ed, Ed, I apologize. Yeah, so I met Ed. I was like. I think eight or nine years old. I went. My aunt used to live near the Hall of Fame, and we would go up to get autographs from the players. Cooperstown. Cooperstown. Okay. Yeah. So I forget who we were waiting for, but it was it's the one day a week when everybody is upstate. So all the lines are like an hour long, and he, my dad walks over to the sidewalk, killing time, and he sees Ed selling his book. He wrote a book, and he's just flipping through it like. Killing time, and then you see stuff about uh, kidney transplants, and then so they get into a conversation. Long story short, he ended up having three kidney transplants after he played, and I forget what kind of cancer he had, but he had cancer too. I had cancer too, and then he had a hip replacement. I had a hip replacement. So now when he comes into town and we hang out at signings, he introduces me to people like, hey, yeah, this is my friend Jack. He's me, just younger. So. <laughs> and that was almost like a chance meeting in a way, right? Cause yeah, it was totally, so like, I wasn't even going up to him. And my dad was just killing time, he just happened to pick up his so, book. So great. if the lines hadn't been long, it may not have ever happened. Yeah. Yeah. Which is amazing. That is amazing. And it's funny, he's, like, huge. He's 6'3", something, and his hands are, like, and I was look, I was like this high. We still have a picture. He looks like I'm wearing a helmet when he put his <laughs> hands on my head. You didn't want to run into Ed Hearn when he was behind the plate. No, you know? no way. How well, tall didn't was even he? Know who he was. Huh? huh? How didn't tall? Even know who he was. I didn't know. Six who he was. three. That's tall for a catcher, right? Yeah. Interesting. So, you've stayed in in touch with him. Over yeah, the years? we've yeah. been in touch. Like he, he's like the nicest guy anyway. That's and cool. then like we. We've been in touch. He's literally like my uncle now. He leaves cool. messages like, hey, you know, it's Uncle Ed. And, you know, like, I, he helped me when I was going through cancer. And, like, yeah. we pick each other up and That's stuff great. like that. He, oh, he's also a certified professional speaker. So he helped me a lot with my stage presence. That's great. And what things uh, like that. Yeah. Like, I would literally do shows or whatever and then call him up and be like, all right, what do you got for me, Ed? And then he'd be like, you know, I love you because I tell you what sucks. That's right. That's what, right. What, uh, That's what, what you need. That's what you need. What got you into comedy? Like, with all the stuff you went through in your life, what made I, you... I don't know. I, I always wanted to do it since I was literally middle school at the latest. Like, I would mm -hmm. watch Comedy Central late at night and then, yeah. like, repeat all the jokes to my friends that That's, I heard. Yep. From a lot the of comedy us, special. I think, and then started that way. And then I was way, just yeah. like, this is cool. And I always liked making people laugh. And I was never healthy enough until uh, a couple years ago. But I kept a pen and pad with me in the hospital, so I just write jokes and right. try them out and stuff. It got me. And so, what writing. age was this when you started feeling a little better? Um, I finally you got. You guys know Butera. Yeah. 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 Yes, he got me started uh, July 2015 in a bagel store. Mm-hmm. Wow. Not not making that. Though. July 2015. Okay. So was like they'd open mic. Uh, yeah. And but Contest. you did you did a Left to Saves Live show at the Country Club. I remember I saw you there. That was a great show. December, right? You talking about? It was it last December? Yeah. Yeah. Might have been. Yeah, the uh, yeah. Yeah, December. You did great. So unbelievable. Yeah. Thanks. So Jack, tell us a little bit about your illness and 
what you went through and everything. And uh, what ages everything happens yeah. so everybody gets All right, I'll give, I'll give the rundown here. Uh, so I was born with the liver disease called biliary atresia. Basically, my bile duct didn't work. I had to get a new liver. This was 90, I was born in 93. I was enlisted at a couple months old. And then I got my first transplant April of 94 at nine months. Lasted almost a year. Then I got my second transplant next April. And then the third transplant four days before my second birthday. Wow. On July 5th. So that was all before your second birthday? All before my second Three birthday. Three livers <clears throat> by the time you were two? Yes. Wow. And then when did you start? Did you have after two? I mean, did you? Uh, how, how did it progress after that? Everything was... Well, I mean, I got... They didn't think I was going to make it because I was in a coma. Wow. After that transplant. and But, yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> that is... That is crazy. So, so, that was age two. And then... And then, like, I was in the hospital, in, you know, growing up sure, a lot. Uh, sure. Nothing, and then two months after I graduated high school with leukemia, out of nowhere. Was, was that any kind of a complication from either side? No, they thought it was what's called PTLD, which is a type of, I forget what it stands for, but a type of transplant lymphoma mm -hmm. type thing, and then it came back leukemia, and they were like, mm. okay. Yeah. And that's the inflammation of the lymph nodes, right? No, it's a blood, 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 blood cancer. We'll keep you supplied, but what's blood. what you said it was in the lymph nodes. So. Lymphoma. Well, lymph nodes when you take lymphoma. when you have he had lymphoma too. But you had lymphoma too. No, they that's what they thought I had. They oh, thought okay. you. Okay, I'm sorry. When you okay. have leukemia, it, could, it travels. You know, yeah, so it be it's anywhere. in your blood. That's why I had anywhere. I had to have chemo for 25 months because wow. they can't. You know, just. And what age was this? This was high school. 18 to just after 20. Yeah. Wow. You know, you could. And how old are you now, Jack? 24. Okay. You could easily take over this organization with those credentials because <laughs> the biggest obstacle John has is not getting fired weekly and fighting the raccoons in his backyard. Yes, you know, and, son uh, of a bitch raccoon. Yeah, you're making us all look Well, you're, a, you're yeah. a big inspiration to yeah, all of what, you, what you're doing. You're, you're a firefighter, right? Yeah, you're cool. a yeah. firefighter. I'm also EMT, so. Uh, I you, was an EMT, yeah, too. You, you, yeah. Really? Your, your mom's I was a EMT? firefighter EMT, yeah. Your mom is Where an EMT? Where are you an EMT? Quorum. In Quorum. Quorum. I was in Wantua. Or, uh, You're an EMT you, too. Buddy. Yeah. Okay. And he's an EMT. With all that, that that he did, now he's giving back volunteer. Wow. EMT. Is that not unbelievable? Yeah. Well, my first, I found, I never met any of my donor family, but my first uh, donor was a lifeguard. So. And is that what got you into EMT? It helped. It yeah. helped. Yeah. yeah. Was it a female lifeguard? No. Oh. It wasn't the girl from that show? Excited. Was it? Oh. <laughs> Folks, we got an EMT, two EMTs, an ex-firefighter. And a chef at the end, all right? So if you're walking by the studio... So when you eat his food... Yeah. Don't we, worry if we're around. We're close by, <laughs> all right? And vice versa, you know? If you don't feel well, once you feel better, Pat will feed you. Once you, you know, a few meatballs. Well, we don't right. want to kill anybody. Yeah, so. right. We yeah. want to get him well. That's right. Now you're doing... Now you went from the bagel stores and what kind of shows are you doing now? A lot, a lot bigger shows. He, like he right? moved yeah. up to luncheonettes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I moved up to 7-Eleven. Nice. Dinner were shows. You, were you on the diner show that one time? No. no. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, I, I did a diner show once, oh. but not with you. I think yet. the first time I worked with you, or maybe the second, we did a that um, in Hicksville, in the basement of that hall, <laughs> oh. that big stage, and that yeah. woman that wouldn't shut up in the in the middle. I shut her up, but she wouldn't shut up. I had to take her out. I know. You shut everybody up. Verbally. Listen, if you're doing 7-Elevens now, kid, all right, <laughs> you got... I performed for a sandwich last week, so... You got first... All right. Yeah. You're on, you're, listen, you're on your way. Listen, I've been doing this 20 years on and off. I still haven't graduated from so, there. So you're on a good pace. Don't worry. Yeah, so, Jack, you do a lot for uh, um, for organ donor. You're a very big uh, yeah. advocate for organ donors. Put, give, tell us a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, well, there's not enough uh, organ donors, and there's a lot of people, 115,000 people on the wait list right now. A new name gets added every 10 minutes, 22 people on average die every day waiting for an organ. But it's just, like, I wouldn't know as much about it if it didn't affect me, but, like, yeah, but that's why so, I have a lot of friends. And yeah. so you're an influence. It's LaRocchia. So you don't have to do this, but you're doing it. Stand and by, That says John. a lot. That so, says a lot. So the organ donors, like, you, we need more <laughs> I organ. wonder how you got fired. Hold on, boss. Just shut up for a second. No, we're, we're, we're doing a say. He understands, John. We're not doing it to be spiteful. <laughs> he calls it the most inappropriate we times. Were we know? were trying to. We're on a I roll. Get, I want to yeah. learn a little bit more about the organ donor, how we'd be, we'd yes. be able to uh, 
Is it just about going, uh, people are not putting it on their license? Yeah, New York sucks. We're 50th out of 50 in the country. Wow. In now, why no. would people not want to put, like, I didn't put it on. I, I don't no have idea. it on my life, but you make it, I'm going to change it. Nobody wants your First organs. of all, who wants lungs from a guy from New York? Well, I used, smoke to smoke three, smoke three, I used to smoke smog three in New, New York air. air. I, I want lungs from a guy from Colorado or something. There was a guy who had a penis transplant, no, a veteran. I'm, I'm guilty oh, of it, well, too. I don't, I don't want him from New York. Well, I don't want, well, I don't want to get into that. Go ahead, Jack. Sorry to crush your dreams. No, but I'm guilty of it, too. I like to learn how to do it. I would like to donate my own. Yeah, it takes, I mean, I have actually always bring the forms with me. I'll you have the forms here? Yeah. We're all going to sign up for organ donation. Yeah. And I'm sure that you, everyone in the audience will too. Yeah. yeah. Speaking is of organ donation. Wait, is, there a web, is there a website? <laughs> yeah, there's a website. Is that an everything. AIDS patient? So, hold on. Tell them the website. <laughs> uh, you in, can just, I think it's organdonor.gov. What are you, are you in bed? What happened to yes. him? Yes. You're He's in bed. In bed. Huh? First of all, why do we have a guest on the show and he's sitting on a box? Why can't he sit on a regular chair? He's, he's sitting, sitting on a regular chair. chair. He's kicking back. Oh, Why are you? All right. How I'm about this? I'm relaxed. He's you're in a bed. Foot. Yeah, he's you're relaxed. He's sitting on a floor. He's four foot two. We had to put telephone books on there for him. That's why. Yeah, the president doesn't usually lay in a bed when he does his uh, press conference. All right? Yeah, he looks like Reagan. Win well, one no for the Gipper. So Jack, listen to me. Jack. Yeah. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Give Pat... A, a donor application right Can now on the camera? air and and tell them to fill it out i will fill it out still that would be good that would be wouldn't that be good tv yeah, yeah, like right move right move now. the um <laughs> move just, the camera down a little bit it's so, so nice of you to take time tell, out of your schedule I can tell he's a parent because only parents facetime the ceiling fan <laughs> yeah <laughs> But Move the camera down towards your bottom of your what face. Are you looking through a periscope? Keep going, keep going. He's a little nuts, but he's oh, not like... He's no. in bed, right, and he's Skyping in. He's more like Uncle Buck, not your parent. Not <laughs> I love that movie. Uh, hey, Jack, Jack, a yeah. question or two. Um, when, you, uh, when you do this donor stuff, when you go out, how do people receive you? Do you have a lot of people who, who donate right there because of I, your... I have, uh, a, I have a couple. Like, that's why I started bringing the forms with me, because people would ask, like, hey, how do I get involved? And then I, so I just eventually just took the forms with me and signed them up there. Because it doesn't matter, like, because when I do shows in the city, you get people from out of town, but it doesn't matter where you're from. You can just be registered. Now, what about... Don't the, go any lower, John. Now, that's how do you... Good. Now, when you, when you donate, they, take, they do it when you're dead. You, you, you yeah, you're, dead. you're already dead. That's the biggest problem. Is I don't want to give get, it to me when I'm alive. <laughs> Well, don't worry about that. So. <laughs> Only joking. <laughs> but we have to add a little laughter. There are people that donate. That's yeah, right. you can donate a living kidney and a piece of a liver because the liver grows back. My next door neighbor's son just did that. His best friend <clears throat> needed a kidney, and he donated a kidney to him. Oh, that's one Ed uh, Cranepool needs a kidney. Yes. From the Mets, he's looking for. He was just on the radio this week. And he only wants Mets fans. Only wants Mets fans. So, I was thinking about doing it because they're giving tickets. Yeah. They're giving tickets um, <laughs> to the dugout. Yeah. Dugout. I would do it for dugout tickets. Well, he used to own my, the dugout. My brother is the genius. He's very queasy. And well, you know got. how the Mets do the blood drive? Yeah. He knows he's going to pass out before they even stick him. But he passes out, and they don't take his blood, but he still gets tickets. Wow. That's brilliant. <laughs> that's all you have to do is pass out. Only Mets fan. So go, he, that we'll do that he much passes out just fans. to get the Mets tickets. Yes. That's oh, awesome. Man. Only Mets fans. Very would say I actually gave really the blood. Not a Mets fan. Tickets are pretty good. They're like way up high, which they shouldn't because you gave right. blood. You can't really be oxygenated that high. Do, do you believe this guy is the president of Lampus? And he's in bed. Jack, talk to, you, talk to the guy it. who got you on the. Well, I don't want to interrupt. I don't want to interrupt Jack because we got him down to the studio, so I don't want to talk myself look, too much. Look at him. He looks like Brian Piccolo in there, in the, in the bed there. You did, cut, you did cut Donnie off a little bit. Donnie was calling about the wonderful show. Ellen Carey showed up. We didn't have Steve enough time. You made the guy call at the wrong time. <laughs> You cut off Donnie. You we didn't cut him off. We fat commercial at eight thirty. We we went through the whole show on what the sh how many people showed up and the raised We're money. We're at eight fifty. We don't want to we don't want to go on too much on a I show understand. recap. Yeah, take it easy, you great forehead. Donnie was about to make a five hundred dollar donation from the night to laugh to save lives. He just texted me. He said, "Screw it." 
Tell him to call back. We apologize. We didn't know that. Tell him to call back. We, we Donnie, tight brother. Ship. We run a tight ship. You can only, you got to cover a show recap quickly. And it's not yeah. my fault. You let Santo back on I, the show. I, if, I, if Santo wasn't here, we probably would have got it in better. Yeah, scrape the Piggly Wiggly crumbs off your chest and keep talking to us. <laughs> I got news for you. Santo, Santo just showed up again. I don't think he was supposed to be on the show. And he already talked about a Larry Lombardi show. On, uh, I, he I did. Brought, I brought it up. He did. I'm not getting fired again. He went to he human resources. He went to human resources. And, and you my, are getting uh, harassment charges, inappropriate behavior. No, no, and, no. And no massaging him at the, John, at the cubicle John anymore. will never find me. I, we did a show together up in Brewster in April. And John is very busy. This is why I respect this man. I was with you, baby doll. You were up there. Yeah, man. But I was in the car with John, and he's got 100 things going on. He had a call with a very important person. I had a, and we need a guess. I was pumping the gas while he was on the phone. It was great. That's how busy this man is. All he right. brought me to pump the yeah, gas we, we see and how to busy feature. He is. Look at him. The whole world can see him now. <laughs> listen. All 10 listen, people that are watching can see him now. Look at him. Santa Saves Lives has two shows this weekend. You guys didn't mention it. We got uh, we, we did. did. We uh, the Teddy Pendergrast show that we uh, done. No, that, it's not Heather. Teddy Pendergrass. That's the musician. <laughs> oh man, Heather Heather Pendergrass. Heather oh, Pendergrass. <laughs> Teddy Bobby, can you put those flyers back on so that the yeah, audience also doing one for doesn't Luther. have to look at him in bed? We're doing one for Luther Vandross as well. <laughs> <Luther>. <laughs> <laughs> we got, are, are you wait? Oh, are you yeah. pants on? Can we talk? <laughs> yeah. put, put, the, put the flyers up, <laughs> man! Put up anything, anything. <laughs> All right, so I like, I like there's a show. Oh, here we go. Comedy Night with the PTA at Martin Luther King Jr. <laughs> the Martin Luther King Show. <laughs> the Martin Luther King Show. It's this Friday. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, you can read everything there. The table for 10 is $375. $5. And this goes to a $45, uh, $45 tickets, group discount, table for 10. Uh, come laugh for this Friday, April 27th. We have no idea who's on the show. Put put the, oh my God, he's in his seat back. Put the, another flyer on. Does he have a thong on? What's he doing? Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Hold on. Is that ladies a ladies and gentlemen, is? this is what it looks like when you need lungs. This yes. is what it looks like. That's exactly what Jack wants to see after all he's been through, right? We have to, uh, we're coming up on a hard stop because Pat Gagliardotti. I think John's got vertigo again. Pat's got to do a segment on the presidential, uh, the JFK and, um, and uh, uh, Lincoln assassination thing. Uh, still unresolved. Yeah, that's what everybody's reasons. waiting for. Yes, this is huge Well, this segment. is bigger than pinatas. And we got a hard stop at uh, four, uh 8.54, running out of time rapidly, so uh, let's get Pat. Uh, can I give a quick shout-out? Oh, uh, uh, of course. Uh, transplants, one of my transplant friends messaged me. She's watching right now. Laura, she had a liver, and then she became a nurse. Awesome. <laughs> All right, Laura. Oh, no, Saving no, no. more lives. But you're not going nowhere. You're staying on. You We're stay. Patty you over here. Patty you're not going nowhere, yeah. But uh, not yet, not yet. We're still interviewing God. Uh, no, no, we, 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 we have <laughs> five minutes left. That's how much he takes. Well, let's, uh, all right, get in here, and we'll still yeah, get him talk, in. Uh -huh. talk to uh, Jack, why don't you Jack, yeah, uh -huh. give everybody the information huh? again no. about yeah, donation? Can, oh, we got everybody here. Pretty much Google. They don't really have the CPAC, you know? Yeah. You can just go to organdonor.gov and sign up. It takes literally oh, a right. minute. And you can save eight lives. So. And leave John on the Skype, because we'll come back yeah, to him and close John, the show. Yeah, uh, let John... Uh, John leaves John on the sites so he can see this. Uh, yeah, we want to be there when the neighbors but when the neighbors and the cops bust in. There's a weirdo in the window, jumping around in his underwear with some right. sort of contraption on his face. Let's let uh, Pat do his bit because we only have five uh, minutes. Make All sure right, it's okay. Patty G. Not Ooh, Patty G. Well, yeah, how about a hand for Jack Clooney? Yes. Yeah, thank Jack you, Jack. Clooning. Jack Clooney, a good man. Okay. He's got hot. All right, go ahead. Has Be everybody hugged their pinata today? Hi, John. Now the audience can <laughs> relax and go to sleep now. Go okay. ahead. Why don't you do it uh, a okay. couple of minutes uninterrupted and we'll... we'll this President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated April 14th, 1865. President John F. Kennedy was assassinated November 22nd, 1963. That's a 98-year difference. So for years, there's been somebody put together years ago a list of coincidences between the two assassinations. Now, some of them have a little minor, trivial, others have been misproven, but here are some that are true fact, okay? Remember, we're talking about uh, two, two of our presidents that were assassinated, it's a little heavy. 98 okay. years apart. 98 years apart. Okay, both presidents were accompanied by another couple. 
The male companion of the other couple was wounded by both assassins. Okay? Lincoln was shot by John Wilkes Booth at Ford's Theater. Kennedy was shot by Oswald in a Lincoln automobile made by Ford. Allegedly. I think he was the right. patsy, but we'll talk about that in another show. Okay. Each assassin committed his crime in the building where he was employed. Okay. After shooting Lincoln, Booth ran from a theater to a warehouse. Mm -hmm. After shooting Kennedy, Oswald ran from a warehouse to a theater. Both assassins were southern white males born in the late 30s it, that were in their mid-20s and were 5 feet 8 in height with hazel eyes and brown hair. Interesting. Okay, this is 98 years apart. Okay, these get a, these get a little spookier. Both assassins were killed before being tried by men who were reared in the north, changed their name as adults, and were bachelors. Mm -hmm. Okay, Lincoln sat in box number 7 at Ford's Theater. Kennedy sat in car number seven in the motorcade. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Mm. Okay. Oh, he's shaving now. He's shaving. Oh, he's shaving. Now. Okay, thank Somebody you. Okay, wait, we got a, on the screen right wait, now? We, okay. got a, we got a couple more here, guys. Yeah, shoot. Okay. Each Just president don't say died shoot. It's with an assassination. Though. Each president died in a place with the initials PH. Mm. Lincoln died at Peterson House and oh, Kennedy died at Parkland Hospital. Hospital. Yeah. Okay. One of the most amazing ones. Mm -hmm. Back in eighteen sixty one. President Lincoln was doing um, a motorcade through the city of Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And they got a policeman from the New York Police Department. <clears throat> What's he, Harry Carrion? Oh, this yeah. is terrible. All right, listen. Okay. Uh, and I got uh, fired. No, this is, this is keep, cool. keep going. We only got three like minutes. This is okay. cool. <laughs> This is real cool. This yeah. is much better than the piñata. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Let me finish the last one. Yeah, this is probably the last this, time this I'm ever going to be no, here. No, no, more. No, no, there's no. a lot more okay, than this. Cool. In, no, we, in, in 1861, President Lincoln was to drive through Baltimore. Okay. Right. He was very low-key. He didn't like a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. right. A New York City police officer... That's why he wore officer, a top hat. He, he wanted no attention, right? A New York City police officer discovered the plot and therefore was instrumental in obviously Kennedy, right. in Lincoln not getting assassinated. That police officer's name was John Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. Well, what's the chance of, uh, of an Irish guy who's a police officer in New York City in the 1900s? Well, John Ken yeah, there's a lot more, though. There's Kennedy's... Now, let me ask you well, we only have five minutes. Wait, Kennedy's secretary right. was named Kennedy Lincoln. No, that's been disproven. That Lincoln? was disproven? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> Lincoln <laughs> wanted to keep a low profile? He's naked now. <laughs> what about the? Um, Lincoln wanted to keep a low profile. He had a, he was six seven. He had a beard well, hold and a top on, hat. No, wait, wait, no, you know you know what the he big one is. Hard to miss. Wait, we only got two minutes. I'm gonna give you the big one. You hey, ready? Look, look, look. Both both of them were succeeded <laughs> by. I can be out of the screen. Man. Hello, this is important. Well, both of them I'm watching John. Both of them ignore him. Both of them were succeeded by presidents named Johnson. No, this is yes. very interesting. And both of those presidents were succeeded by presidents with five letters in their name. I Grant and Nixon. And both presidents and their successes conferred with a nationally known black leader about civil rights. <laughs> oh, my God. This is embarrassing. Jack, Jack right? just said if he hears that again, he's going to donate his ears. <laughs> All right, we got to wrap up the show. Ears, I think we <laughs> Jack just said he's going to donate his ears if, if he hears another thing like that. We have gone to Wait, the lowest they, of the low. Can they see John? Yeah, they can I, I, see yeah. him. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why. This is why. Stay off the drug, kids. Jack, I love it. I think you... John LaRocchi was probably the best guest we had. <laughs> oh, tell, tell, him, tell him where you're going to be. Where's John Wilkes Booth? Hold on, we got to wrap it up. Tell him I'll where you're going to be. I'm going to be at Southern Fire Department May 5th. Is that a left to save his life? Is that a Rick Morgan show? Don't know. Oh. With my mom. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Oh my God, this is horrible. Listen, we're gonna I get like letters. That bit. It's very interesting that bit. I'm, remember the, the the bit from last week about the pinata? Do you have that stick handy? Because I like to beat this bit. Look at this. Smash it this is rim. horrific. No, I like this yeah. bit, Pat. Uh, I love the way Bobby made us the small screen and put this. I like this. how you put it together. <laughs> All right, there's a listen, folks. That's your this host. Is Horrible! Uh, I think John is. Oh fine. my God! When can Folks I get my own show? Sing. We hope we're going to be on the air next week. I think we're wrapping it up now. Thanks to Patty G, our uh, historian. Thanks there. to Peter Bales for calling in, our other historian. And the very funny and talented and uh, inspirational Thank Jack Clooney. Thanks to Danny from the uh, and, uh, uh, Port St. Lucie Fire Department. Thanks to John LaRocchia. John LaRocchia. And, uh, thanks to the white Jesse Owens. If, here. if there's anybody out there, please, I need my own show. Who do I have to stop? I've been in show business Good for 30 everybody. years. Take care. Have a good one. 86 gym shorts on for the Mets. Two. He got his 40-year-old gym shorts. Good night, folks. Good night. I gotta call the police and settle nice. the. I gotta call Orlando and nice smooth job. things over with the cops. <laughs>
ever lift anything in your career? We apologize, folks. Where did you get out of shape? We had a wardrobe malfunction. There's a Motel 6 in Indianapolis. Uh, just look the window and, uh, Call the police. 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 No? Hi, folks. Okay, so they just proved that one. Roll up the faces and smack it right over the wall. Play ball. Take off the caps. Time for the song. Red, white, and blue. We all sing along.